Okay, so we are at the Contoso online store that you've probably seen before. Um, very quickly, the what you see on the top here is the navigation hierarchy. This is the navigation hierarchy that was published from Dynamics AX uh, and is the basically showcasing the managed navigation in SharePoint 2013. The storefront itself is again hosted in SharePoint 2013. What you see down below here is a set of content search web parts the first one being a customer favorite so this could be data based on click-through data you can show what are the set of products that have the most amount of click-through the next one is a staff recommendation which is essentially a web part that could be editorially controlled attribute and you could show the list of products that have a staff recommendation value equal to true the next one is brand, which is another uh, popular web part. You can filter and show a specific brand. The next one is the products that are on sale, and that is something that's also possible. I'm going to go ahead and click on audios, and what you will see here is uh, the prices itself were returned from the commerce runtime services. So this is the prices as was set for an anonymous user. Right now I'm not signed in, right? And so these are the set of prices that are showing up. And uh, basically what you have is, uh, I guess, a 20% discount on audio. You can see that and you can also see that uh, it shows the base price and the struck off price itself. Now let's go on to cameras here. Again, you can see the list of cameras. You could also see subcategories within the cameras itself. One of the things I would like to draw your attention to is the list of refiners that are right here on the left hand side. So for example, I could refine on color, right? So I get all the set of blue cameras. And what you will notice is with the refinement of color, you can also sh it shrinks automatically the set of refinements that are other refinements that apply. So for example, image resolution, screen size, file formats, these are all the additional refiners that are added that are camera specific, that are category specific, but they get also um, get narrower as you select the set, the, uh, the blue color. So basically you see the set that applies to the current result set. I'm going to go ahead and click on computers here and uh, basically you will see that computers for example have a different set of refiners as compared to cameras so this is basically the faceted navig navigation feature of SharePoint that shows up so you can see that ca computers shows display resolution processor memory screen size just a different set of attributes than um, what the cameras showcased so let's go ahead and click on one of these uh, laptops and i'll show you one of the features of called item availability here um, so basically if the item is available you'd be able to see it right here of course you can select a certain uh, a variant and if it was available it would show up and if it didn't it was not available it would it say appropriately another um, uh, thing that i'd like to draw uh, draw your attention to is essentially the description on the lower side this description is can be rich html right and in this case we have authored it in ax and brought it down but of course sharepoint also has a content authoring system in which case you can choose to reference the item in uh, ax and uh, author rich content within sharepoint or any other content data network of your choice what you see at the lower bottom here is essentially a set of related products these were editorially controlled re related products some additional features that we have is we also have customers who bought this also bought this and frequently bought together uh, i don't have this on this particular machine right now but uh, you should be able to see that in the ctp vm itself specification is something that we can also show so depending on the attributes that are defined in ax we can show a specification that's related to a specific laptop what you see is also that we can support multiple images and multiple image sizes for a single product so in this case uh, we show we support both thumbnail and the ma major uh, and the larger size of the image itself and to do this only a single image was uploaded and one, through the image rendition feature of SharePoint we are able to showcase the different sizes automatically let's so let's go into cameras here and I'm just going to click on one of these to see uh, 
Okay, so uh, just a whole color variation that can be seen quite nicely over here. So now I'm going to switch to another computer. Um, and we will see some of the more later bits at this point. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on cameras here. And what we will do is uh, we will uh, go ahead and click on one of the consumer digital camera M300, which looks pretty good. So but once this uh, loads up, what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and keep the blue camera and I'm going to go ahead and add this to cart. And what we will do is we will go ahead and add also another product uh, to the cart, probably uh, something from the computer side. I'm going to go ahead and click on this very first laptop that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and select the red one and I will go ahead and add this to cart. So we'll go ahead and just view this cart here for a second. Uh, so what I have is uh, basically we have the camera and we have a laptop, right? And uh, basically the total is about $790. It looks like I got some savings on the computer based on a, a probably some kind of a discount that applied to the computer. But whatever is still showing up in the cart is for the anonymous user. So now I'm going to go ahead and sign in as a user and we'll come back and view the cart. Go ahead and say, say continue for this particular thing and we'll go ahead and, and add in a previous credential that I had created. Just a quick uh, um, recall here on the R2 feature. We allow you to use forms based authentication, right? So because of that, you can basically specify um, any kind of uh, uh, email address and password. That is something that we support. But in addition to that, we also support signing in with Facebook, for example. So this was primarily done with the intention of allowing uh, any kind of third party uh, provider to be integrated into. So what you see right now is a cart, but it's updated with the prices that apply to Adriana specifically, right? So in this case, what you're seeing is I'm getting an additional discount and I'm thinking, I'm guessing this is a 30% discount on all electronics that I had defined as a line discount in AX. And uh, basically what you're seeing is this, this set of savings here. And uh, what you see is my total savings is that amount right here. So as soon as I sign in, the card gets refreshed with the pricing that was specifically uh, associated with this particular customer. So this is customer specific pricing that we we talked about earlier when I was presenting the slides. So I'm going to go ahead and click on checkout here. And uh, now, of course, I have the option of ship items to me or I have the op options of pick up in store and so on. And for this particular um, uh, demo, I'm going to go ahead and select select for each item. So what this lets you do is change, uh, select a delivery preference per product. So I'll go ahead for the uh, uh, camera here. Let's go ahead and say that I want to ship it. It's pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and select ship items to me. Since I'm registered user, I have an address on file, which is a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and click on calculate shipping methods and charges. I will select standard as the shipping method that I want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and change your delivery preference for the laptop. And I'm going to select pick up items in store. So now what you see here is the Bing map integration feature. So basically you're seeing the Bing map show up right below here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in Bellevue, which is closest to where I live and go ahead and search. So now what is happening is we are doing a search across all the stores that have been made available to the online store to see if uh, where they are and what items are present. What you will see here is we present the list of stores that are close to where I searched, right? There is one in Bellevue, apparently one in Redmond, and there's one in 
you village in seattle but what you also have with that is information that's basically giving you the availability of this item so in this case it's saying the adventure works laptop you have 50 quantity of it available in store one which is a good way for you to know that you want to pick it up there versus store two which is not available at and store three where it's not available so basically i'm going to go ahead and select store one since it seems to have availability and it's close to where i live and you go ahead and say done so now i'm going to go ahead and click on next step what you will see here is also new in r3 so earlier we had only the ability to add credit card as a payment type right so that's continues to be a supported uh, model so i can go ahead and enter the um, the name and the number details so that's for uh, i have entered the test credit card number i'm going to go ahead and give an expiration year and i'm going to give a cc id that works and uh, i can give a billing address and there you go at this point what you will see is it says here that the payment amount is 103895 right and uh, that's all put on the credit card but what i do have is also have a gift card that i'd like to use so i can go ahead and say add gift card and i'll go ahead and enter the gift card number and let's do a gift card balance here so when i click on get gift card balance what it's essentially doing is it's doing a real time service call back into ax to retrieve the exact amount that is there on this specific gift card so when it gets back it should give me the amount and then i can decide whether i want to full apply the full amount or i can do a partial amount as i would like to use i think this is uh, taking a bit to get warmed up here let me just let's just give it another second so besides the gift card okay there you go so it says i have 140 dollars on this gift card so i'm going to go ahead and say i want to apply 100 dollars to this so now what you will see is as soon as i apply 100 dollars here the payment amount in the credit card should reduce and there you go so it went to 938.95 so we put hundred dollars on the gift card and 938.95 on uh, the credit card so in addition to this we have the ability to also add a loyalty card so it looks like i already have two loyalty cards available i can choose to put it on one of them and i can give a payment amount on it and uh, in that case i can redeem loyalty points for that dollar value that i specify we'll look a little later into the loyalty transactions but for this particular scenario i'm not going to add the loyalty card itself so there you go so it also gives you the payment total and the order to total and both of these are are equal at this point of time so order total being what it costed and payment total is what all you paid for so now that it is good to go i'm going to go ahead and click on next step so this is the final order confirmation so i do have the product it gives me the price and it gives me any kind of savings i had and uh, now what we will do is you can of course specify the reward card gift card another thing i would like to draw your attention to is the payment methods right here so you have the ability to um, specify that it says both you paid using the credit card and the gift card so now i'm going to go ahead and click on submit order so once this goes through i should get an order confirmation for this specific order itself there you go so i have an order cons confirmation that i can use for a uh, future referral itself now let's just go quickly into the account page right here so this essentially shows me the account information things like uh, whatever the address information the email address and the like uh, some other things of interest includes the loyalty information let me go ahead and click on view details here and let's see if this this might take a second to populate i'm just going to give it a 
couple of minutes there you go so basically this is again a real time service call to get the latest and greatest inf loyalty information from ax which is the central um, master for this particular data so what you see here is telling me that i have two loyalty cards one of the number 10001 and one is the 100009 number so i have two of these cards so let us look at some of the details for this particular card the 10001 card so it looks like it has one loyalty program associated with this card and in terms of tier progress i'm already at the gold tier so it tells me that it also gives me information uh, about the loyalty points i have in this particular tier so in this particular case it's 104.140 loyalty points that i have it also gives me a transaction history of what what all transactions i did using these loyalty card right so i apparently redeemed uh, 10 points earlier and uh, i redeemed 50 points in some other test transaction and 200 points in some other test transaction. So really a complete snapshot of all loyalty information. We also have the ability to join and um, get a, join a new loyalty card right from the online store. That is something that we also support. And of course, uh, accruing loyalty points. So we have the ability in the time of placing the order to accrue loyalty points as and when we go. So let's go ahead and click on account information again. And what you will see is I also have a couple of other uh, and other things that I have done. Of course, you can see the order status, but you can also see certain wish lists that I have already created. So I have a Christmas list that I apparently have created. So this is, again, a new feature that we have added in R3, where you have the ability to create wish lists with the, uh, products and quantity that you would like to use. So you see it also gives you the stock remaining so you can decide whether you want to make such a purchase. Let's go back into the Contos online store and say I want to add a couple of more things into the Christmas list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on televisions here and go ahead and add that one in. It seems that looks pretty nice. So I'll go ahead and click on the heart right here. Now that I'm signed in, I can go ahead and say I want to you use this one so it asks me which particular wish list i would like to use this for i'm going to go ahead and pick on the christmas list and so i've added it to the christmas list so now i'll let's go back into account right here and i'm going to go back into christmas list and it has two items in there and if i ever want to add it to the cart i just go back choose it click add to cart and go back go through the transaction like any other so uh, that's the way you would transfer something from the wish list into the cart itself another very important uh, part of the wish list is as and when we have created this wish list it's associated with the customer but it's also made available in ax and from this can be queried across any other channel so for example when they're calling into the call center or the pause when they're somebody is checking somebody out in the store they can see the wish list as suggested products and recommend that they buy a product or recommend that there's a sale on that particular product and so on so it just opens up both scenarios for the consumer and also uh, uh, enable scenarios for the sales clerk where uh, they can go ahead and promote a specific product based on what it what it has um, so let's let's do a couple more things now. So one is I would like to go into gift cards. There are there is at least one bug here that we will encounter and a couple that we have surely encountered on the way. But um, uh, let's try to go through the scenario anyway. So this is a gift card here that's rendering. Um, let me go ahead and say I want one quantity of the gift card, right? And I want it for an amount of hundred dollars. So what I would do is I would go ahead and select add to cart. Okay. Okay, let, let me just go ahead and refresh this one more time and give this a shot. Maybe the other option is I just close the browser and get back. Let me just try that. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on gift cards here and try this one more time. Okay, 
so I guess it didn't work. But what I wanted to show you is that you can purchase a gift card uh, and uh, you can specify uh, the amount, of course. Uh, and what, what happens is essentially you have the option of either using electronic delivery or ship to destination. Both those uh, are available. And uh, essentially what you can do is uh, with this, you will be able to let me see if I continue here. So basically, you can choose the email option or you can choose the option of uh, just shipping it to store. And what happens is once the sales order comes into AX and uh, it's uh, uh, fulfilled either way and invoiced, that's when the gift card is actually unlocked and created. So in the email option, it would get emailed out at that point of time. And in the ship to option, it would get shipped out at that point of time. So both these options are uh, available for gift card purchase itself. The next thing that I wanted to show you is the feature that we have which introduced, which is kits. So let's go into cameras right here. I'm going to go scroll down here and what you see here is the photography starter kit. Let's go ahead and select this particular one. Uh, so what you see is it's a kit and apparently it looks like it has uh, three components on it. If you scroll down, what you see is the three products that belong to the specific bundle. So in this particular case, it's the, there's the printer, of course, that looks nice and uh, there's an ability to change the product. You also have a camera and I want to see if I can change this camera. Let's go ahead and choose the red one. Apparently, there's a price difference of $12.00. 50 cents for that um, so that's what I want to select but and the last one that you can do is the lens and maybe I want to see if there's another lens that I can find so we can go ahead and choose this one or you can choose this one I'm going to go ahead and choose this one so what's interesting here is the retailer has made available a few configurations of the kit right to the online store itself and now in the online store you have the ability to pick between these configurations and you're not doing it through some model number or configuration number but you're doing it more visually by selecting each product independently so it's an extremely uh, visual experience that we have also try uh, try to show in a way where uh, the user can interact and pick products and the like so once this is done uh, they can go ahead and of course add it to cart which i hope will work now we'll go ahead and try that and what we will do if this uh, goes through is we can see in the cart actually when you see the cart itself you will also be able to see the three components that you added with it so let me go ahead and select view full cart contents here it's probably going to take a minute, but there you go. So there you see, able to see that it's a photography starter kit. It tells you the three components that are part of it. It tells you the dollar amount that was uh, changed because of something, you know, whether something was included means it was standard price and there was no issue with that. But if it's something is 1250, I guess, I guess that was the price difference that was uh, for the red color versus the other color. And it shows you the total amount. So there is really a lot of detail in terms of exactly what the kit component and kit that you selected is. So the next uh, aspect that I would like to show on, which is again a new feature, is the store catalogs. Uh, I don't have it completely configured here, so I will not be able to go into it in detail. But what I want to talk to is the fact that once you click on store catalogs, what you have is you have the ability to... Uh, pick a store location and see the set of products associated to that particular store itself. So in this case, it is actually showing me a few products, right? It's showing me like the desktop and LCD TV and the like. And what you can do is you can change the store location, for example, right? And you can pick any of the stores and see a catalog that's relevant to it. I'm not sure I have it set up for all of them, but yeah, okay. So it looks like that 98052 also has certain products associated with it. So you can see the set of products associated to a specific store. So that's another uh, feature that was added in the R2 time frame. Order status is uh, no, yet another feature, but of course it's been remained the same. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. There you go. And if you were to click on order status here, you should be able to see the list of products and the order history for this particular customer itself. And it looks like I have a few that was pending uh, in this particular case. 
looks like there was a bug that we encountered but anyway so basically you're able to see the orders and you can see the order details as required also with it so this is basically the set of uh, new features and we have made this available across both Contoso and Fabricam. Let me quickly go back into Fabricam here because I want to show you the new fashion storefront. Uh, let me go ahead and clean this and I'm going to open up my other machine and uh, let's go into Fabricam right here. So this is the new fashion storefront that we have made available. As you can see it has a different chrome from the Quintoso site. Uh, another thing that we added is the popularity web part. So this is a web part that comes standard as part of SharePoint 2013 and it just tracks click through and based on click through shows the most popular set of products. Uh, so, uh, the next thing is the navigation hierarchy itself. You can see that we have three uh, nodes that we have chose to expose here. Something of interest here is that uh, a category promotion that can be used as part of uh, this particular navigation hierarchy itself. So this is an image that uh, we let you associate with that fashion accessories node. Again, we have chosen to keep this very data driven and we allow you to control it through AX uh, and uh, you can change it as uh, you would like. So this is more to showcase the data driven nature of the site itself and uh, uh, just provide more user controls that are reusable. So when we click on this now, one of the variations you will see is a category landing page. So again, very data driven. So tops, the category node called tops has this particular image associated with the quotes, has this particular image associated with it. And we were able to even arrange these various pictures together using some index column index and a row index sort of and doing by using both of those we actually even dynamically constitute this particular page itself so let's go ahead and click on menswear here and fashion accessories so you can see we have three different category landing pages i'm going to go back to menswear right here and let's go ahead and click on the suits category what you will see here is also the item availability feature so this particular item is not available and is shown right here in the gallery page. So the way this happens is if all the variants are unavailable for that particular item across all warehouses made available to the online store, then we show such a uh, such a message right in the gallery page. And of course we have the other ones where they might have specific uh, variants available and specific variants not available. In that case, we will show that the, at the gallery level that it is available. I'm going to go ahead and click on the wool uh, blend suit here. Looks like the size 38 is not available. Let me go ahead and click on 32. 32 is available. So we have a new size picker that lets you pick si different sizes. We also have the ability to zoom right here so if you had a high resolution image you can certainly avail of the zoom and uh, it will it will show you a pretty good image of the same thing um, we also have of course we have the color style is another dimension that we're show, showing here which we ha don't have on the contoso site so we have the size color and style three dimensions that are available of course we've changed the chrome a little bit this add to bag that's slightly different here um, but uh, primarily the functionality is equivalent both across Contoso and Fabricam and uh, the controls in terms of the look and feel is what we have tried to vary. So all the functionality in terms of gift cards, wish lists, uh, the different payment types, loyalty, all of that will be made available also in Fabricam. Uh, and you will see that actually even in CTP4 that you will be able to see both these sites and just primarily to showcase different look and feel. Um, something that I didn't really go through that is available is a like, tweet and pin it. So this is something that is available. Similarly, the home page like and home page tweet, all of these are enabled. So that's one of the social integration aspects that is also available. Um, another uh, thing that I would like to uh, end this demo with is the uh, 
the French uh, uh, site integration. So what we have done is uh, we have uh, two uh, languages configured within AX itself, uh, one in English and one in French. And essentially what we have done is we have translated um, the site right in the retail channel navigation hierarchy. So you will see that if I go into retail channel navigation hierarchies here, and if I were to pick the Contoso online hierarchy, right, and if I was going to, oh, I, need, I think I need to hit the edit category hierarchy. And if I were to click on audios and I see translations here, what you will see is I have the US translation, but I also have a French translation for the same thing. Okay, in the case of audio, it's the same, but in the case of uh, computers, for example, if I were to go into this, there's a UAE and US, and then there's the French uh, translation, which is ordinated uh, here, right here. So these translations are configured. We also configure the online store to take both translations and now bring both these translations into SharePoint. In doing so, what we have is we have two sites, the English site that's at 40,002 port, and we have the French site that is available at the 60,002 pride. So if you have a language picker or a country picker or something like that, right, you can shuttle between these two ports. They both are in the same SharePoint farm. They are two different publishing portals having the data in the same product catalog site collection and able to render translated information. So now if I go ahead and click on appliances here, basically what I'm seeing is a set of appliances with the product title also translated. Again, translations managed centrally using the same catalogs, just translating the text attributes and then bringing it down uh, using uh, the publishing pipeline and into the two publishing portals. So this is something that we are supporting. So multi languages and this also showcases if you just have a single language and you just want to do it outside uh, the English ENUS or any other, it just shows you that it's possible. And we will also um, have uh, uh, how to's on how exactly to do this, how what files you have to translate and the like. So this is about the language translation itself. With this, I think I have covered uh, most of the features that I wanted to cover. I have not, I didn't uh, go through the Facebook and Twitter um, campaign publishing aspect. That is something that will be made available um, and we'll have a how to on it so that you can follow through on, on it itself. But that's another feature that is supported. So with this, I would like to go back into my slide deck right here. So yeah, so uh, thank you very much for watching this uh, webcast session. Uh, we highly encourage you to use the product. Uh, there will certainly be some issues that you will encounter, but uh, I hope you can give us feedback, uh, make progress and give us feedback. Uh, we really look forward uh, to any kind of issues you find, any kind of specific feedback you have on features or improvements that we can make. Thank you very much. Thanks.